What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Young and Stuff. If it's your first time to the channel, thanks for joining us. How many hats do you own? My wife would say that I own way too many, but of course I say it's not enough. I love hats, and I have a moderately impressive collection if I do say so myself. And I do. But how long have we been wearing hats? Let's find out. Today I'm going to dive into the history of hats. Exactly. How is it that you came to be way out here without a horse or boots or a hat? But before I do, if you like origin stories and little known fun facts and sometimes other stuff, then you're in the right place because that's what I do. So hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and while you're there, ring the bell for notifications so you get updates on all future episodes. Awesome. Let's go. There aren't many official records of hats before 3000 BCE, but they were still probably commonplace before that. The Venus of Willendorf figurine dates to around 27,000 to 30,000 years old, and historians believe that it depicts a woman wearing a woven hat. A Bronze Age man that they nicknamed Otzi was found frozen in a mountain between Austria and Italy, and he was wearing one of the oldest known confirmed hats, and they know this because he was still wearing it. His body was frozen in a way that it was almost perfectly preserved. They even knew what he had eaten earlier that day. But that's a different story. Look, there's always an explanation for all this so-called phenomenon. Maybe you're right. It's probably just the freezers. And when I get through with them, I doubt you'll be seeing anything strange on this farm for a long time. We'll see. You all right, Tom? Get some rest. He'd probably been there since 3250 BCE, and his hat was made of bear skin with a chin strap made of several straps of leather stitched together. It basically looked like a Russian fur hat, but without the flaps. One of the first depictions of a hat was drawn on the wall of a tomb in 3200 BCE, and it had a man wearing a conical straw hat which was a common style for the time. Hats were always status indicators. Uh, what's up, man? <laughs> Only the best materials were used to make hats for the wealthy, but in the military, your cover may denote a branch of service, or your rank, or regiment. Police typically wore peaked caps or brimmed hats like the like the Highway Patrol or State Troopers or even the Canadian Mounties. Well, for getting to wear such cute mount me hats. As far as status goes, the tallness of a hat said a lot as well. If a servant or a person of lowly status was wearing a tall hat it likely wasn't as tall as the hat of a person who actually had status a person in charge in the old days wore a hat that spoke to his rank or importance head coverings likely started out as nothing more than protection from the sun or elements and then developed into a different type of protection when warfare spread through the old world but there were also ceremonial coverings, like native headdresses, or in modern times, mortar boards, or the cap half of a cap and gown for graduation. Hats mean all kinds of different things to different people. On a stupid boat with a stupid hat. And styles have developed and evolved over the centuries. My favorite style is anything that goes on my head. What's yours? That's it for this one guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to click like on this video and subscribe to my channel. And while you're there, ring the bell for notifications so you get updates about all future episodes. Tune in next week when I do another set of um, spicy covers. <laughs> See you next time. Let's start over. Oh no, I lost it. You have to do the whole episode in the set <laughs> <laughs> So before I say that line, me, 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 you like my hat? Oh, me. It's a lot of information. I like my hat. Willendorf, mm, you train, you train. Oh goodness. 
Dog, don't bark. I think we're alone now. Doesn't seem to be anyone around. What's going on over there? Making all kinds of noise. <laughs> Many <laughs> my voice cracked. Watch. Oh my gosh. And we're back. Okay. I think we're alone now. The beating of our hearts is the only sound. And trains. My goodness. I don't know if you can hear that, but another plane is flying overhead. It's like they won't leave me alone today. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Mary Tyler Moore moment.